I wish I could lie to you, but hell in a cell, in a cell, not call cell, minus first match. Sucked. Send. <clears throat> oh! Yes. You, you can see by my sheer amount of enthusiasm what I think about Hell in a Cell already. And folks, this is not helping. Oh, well, maybe it does help a little bit. Wow. I just watched Hell in a Cell. Boy, was it bad. For a bunch of reasons. So, my name's the one, the only Hobo Tom. I can't believe I wasted four and a half hours watching this. Although breakfast was good. My drink was yummy. One match was amazing. Everything else? The last match? The main event of the evening. Ugh. Yes, I was watching Hell in a Cell tonight. And I have my little prediction list. A whole bunch of which nothing came true. Oh, wow, that's right. I did terrible at guessing. Well, actually, the women I got right. Let's see, they didn't even do that. They barely had anything. Okay, folks, I'm going to give it to you straight up. The only match you need to watch, go to YouTube and watch the Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Hell in a Cell match. That was worth it. I'll get into why later. Just skip everything else. Save yourself four hours. Be with your loved ones. Give your kids a hug. Give your wife a kiss. Or more. And just skip this pay per view. Because it wasn't worth paying for. And it almost wasn't worth watching for free. In fact, I cut into my hobo time just to watch this pay per view. I'm, by the way, because of this, I am skipping the crown jewel. Well, I have to work anyway that day. But, wow, this is bad. I can't wait to hear Jim Cornette rip the show apart. It's going to have 10 new bungholes and three more elbows by the time he's done with it. And my knee's feeling better, so that's the only good thing. I kind of lay down on the couch, relax, and enjoy a good episode of Raw. Oh, I mean, hell in a cell. But let's get this show started. Um, They just announced new matches. There's nothing like what I got off of CBS. In fact, they were just like literally announced this morning. They realized, hey, we only have four matches. If they did the four matches right, it would have been really good. They did not do them right. And then they had some raw quality matches. I think only a... Oh, wow. All the ones I guessed. I only got one wrong. Charles, maybe it's her. Oh, no. I got, I'm like a. I think the seer. I got the fiend right. Charlotte, right? 
I only got two right. Out of my guesses, I don't even know what match they were having. I am a 50 50 booker. And you know what? Just to make some people happy because some people are, are really upset. In Discord, it was kind of fun at least. We got a fairly good ride on stuff. Let's see here. Um, Zach VOG. You sir get, get that six count. I think I put my own post up and he responded very humorously to it. And I'll get to that. I'll actually get to that later too, because this is not going to take long. It starts off the kickoff show. Kickoff show is one hour long. I figured they're not going to do anything. They had one match. It was Lacey Evans versus Natalia Neidhart. Uh, I mean, it wasn't bad. I think the fact that you get fed the same people over and over and over again is so dull. Um, although you can see the kind of side straps on, the, on Natalia's panties this time through her outfit. Sometimes you, you can't, sometimes you just see bare flesh through the kind of mesh paneling. I saw panties there. I got happy. I think that's the only good thing I can say about this match. Uh, let's see here. For the most part, Lacey Evans just works over the legs of Natalia. The one thing I will say, it wasn't really botchy, which is good. Uh, it was Lemon Lacey this time instead of Cherry Drop Lacey. Something different. Natalia. <laughs> that up from something. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lemon, Lace, Lemon Lacey went to do her moonsault. Natalia just sat up. Lacey Evans still isn't good. She's improving. Don't get me wrong. This match wasn't botchy. Just something about her timing really seems off. I mean, eventually Natalia did put the sharpshooter on Lacey Evans after Lacey Evans couldn't get it on Natalia a bunch of times. Of course not. It's Natalia's move. She's not going to lose yeah, her move on a pay-per-view. 
Uh, but Lacey was barely turned over, and she just started to tap. I guess the ref said, okay, time, start tapping. So she's like, oh, tap. Oh, wait, I have to be turned over first. So Natalia Neidhart won. I guess that, I, I hope that's the end of this. This was a ham sandwich. Um, then there was an Ollie Norton kind of in the back. I guess that's going to start a feud because it just seemed really weird that there was a match between those two tonight. There were a whole bunch of unannounced matches or they were announced they were literally announced like this morning when I was still asleep in bed. And I just didn't care to look things up because I'm like, when, when I looked them up on Friday, I'm like, okay, I guess this is going to be it. I made a couple of guesses, and CBS Sports was terrible. They couldn't guess, them, or Vince had a change of heart, or I don't know what happened. But then, I'll tell you what, the show started off proper. Watch Hell in a Cell just for this one match. After that, again, go hug your kids, go kiss your wife, go take your dog for a walk, even let your cat run around outside. Because Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch was amazing. It was the only saving grace of this whole of this entire show. Um, they just start off. Uh, they don't even lock Cage yet, and Sasha just beats up Becky. Becky used the door. I like the creative use there. Then she took the chain. The only thing I really wanted to see, and I won't take it away from him too much, she wrapped the chain around her fist. I wanted to see someone Zeus. I want to see that smooth forehead of Sasha Banks get bloody. Because all she did, she hit her in the gut, which still hurts. But nothing like a good old headshot with a, with a freaking hand wrapped chain or chain wrapped around your hand. So that was pretty good. Uh, then, again, they use a cage a lot. I love they, they use a cage like a cheese grater. My only minor quibble is that there was no no blood, or I think Sasha Banks cut her elbow. I cut my elbow too. I cut my elbow into freaking pruning of trees. So again, it was good though. A lot of outside the ring, ring stuff, almost like two K seventeen. So I really had that kind of video game feel. And Sasha Banks just started up throwing chairs and chairs all over the place. And the chain being used, that was great. Uh, eventually, saw, eventually, Becky Lynch does lock, lock them in the cage. Uh, chairs get tossed in. Uh, there was uh, Sasha Banks was hitting meteors from everything. It was a meteor uh, into a ladder propped against the cell. Becky Lynch was sitting on a chair. She hit a meteor from there. Um, that was just it was create it was it was creative. I'll, I'll give the ladies that much. Again, creative use of the chairs. Um, I'll tell you what, Lynch either messed up or Sasha took one nasty bump on a chair because you could tell us, like, hey, are you okay? And then she took her hand away too quickly and she had, like, oh my God, you did that. Like, I did that wrong. That, oh my God, I'm sorry look. Like, hey, are you okay? Oh, wait, they can still see me talking? Okay. I'm going to, even the rest, like, whoa. You know, that's like, Becky, the camera's on you. So again, that's just kind of kind of a natural thing, the, the humanization of Becky Lynch. Or actually, the true person, the true kind, caring personality of one, Rebecca Quinn. Ooh, Seth. Ooh, Seth. Uh, then again, it was just kendo sticks all over the place. They got creative. They were they started to build stuff. They, uh, I guess they could because Sasha Banks. Yeah, they say she's 120 pounds. She's 112 pounds, maybe. She's short. They did this file where they built stuff with kendo sticks and chairs. So the, and then Becky Lynch put Sasha Banks in said chair. And like did like a running, a running prop pick. That was amazing. 
Sasha Banks set up a chair in the ring, but put like the legs in the chair so the back of the chair was facing out. So here is Cage, legs of chair, face of chair. So the face of chair is facing out and ran back into that. Again, they got creative. I like that. Uh, Eventually, Becky Lynch just put Sasha Banks and disarm her. Uh, not well, not before Sasha Banks tried to use, do the bank statement with a kendo stick. Again, creative use of stuff. Uh, Becky Lynch did get the win, and I'll tell you what: when I saw it, I didn't realize that this was going to be the best match. But this was a filet mignon match. Ah. And the second match didn't fall too far behind. Then it was really good. And a little hiccup there. Ugh. But Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan versus Luke Carper and Eric Riddle. This was fun. It was a tornado tag match to start off with a brawl. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Eric for a while. Roman hit that smell and drop. Awesome. He actually, I don't know how much he really does struggle. Or if he just shows off a lot, but I'll, he he made it look real though. If you're gonna pick up a big guy, you're gonna struggle. You're just like gonna toss him around. It was fun. It was. I, I gave him probably a little extra credit. Oh, and Roman Reigns had pyro. You give him pyro. I like pyro. Again, it had to be hard after that opening match, but that was pretty good. Uh, Harper Harper did that one dive. Ooh. Roman Reigns caught him to honestly the best he could to, to kind of hold him up. Luke Harper is going to be a sore boy tomorrow because it looked like he did honestly tweak his knee, which is never a fun thing. I've tweaked my knee. It just sucked. Even if you just tweak it, probably nothing permanent because he was still running around and stuff. But but he did he, he tweaked it pretty good for a moment. And then when he did a dive... He's a big guy, and Roman Roman's a big guy, but Roman really couldn't stop all of his momentum. So his so Luke Harper's momentum took him right into the corner of the table. You know that wasn't planned. It was just things happen because it looked like he, he took he, he took a chunk of his head on the corner table. He'll probably have a bump or bruise there. Um, again, it was just really good though. Solid, hard-hitting, fun match. Daniel Bryan took some nasty bumps, too. Oh, did that hurricane off the table. <laughs> and unfortunately, land on said table. He's going to be feeling that. No one no one who took had anything to do in this match is going to be on TV tomorrow or Sunday. Or they might, but they're just really going to have speaking roles. Because they took, I hate to use the term, but they did take a beating. Took a hellacious beating! But it was... I'll tell you what, it was good. Um, Roman Reigns eventually it took like like yes kicks, and then it was a Superman punch, knee plus, and a spear. And Eric Rowan, I think Aaron Rowan took the pin. And Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan won, and it was fun because then of course, uh, who was it wanted to do a handshake? I think. Daniel Bryan went to do the handshake. When Roman was going to shake his hands, he pulled it back. He, he looked around, and, he, and he's like... And Roman Reigns had the biggest smile on his face. He's like, okay. There was a hug it out. Hug it out. And they hugged it out. You can tell Roman just thoroughly enjoyed the moment. He was pretty beat up, though, because he took his, uh, his sweet gingerly time going back. But Roman was smiling. I'll tell you what. Roman Reigns, Daniel and Bryan, they earned that match. It was pyro. It was fun. It was hard-hitting. It's just what you expect kind of a brawlish match would be. This is a surf and turf match. And then I'll tell you what. One of the snoozes of the night, because I think because when I saw this, I'm like, I'm going to go lay on the couch, was Randy Orton visitors Ali. They were really desperate to fill some time. I guess. They could have had, I guess, the Charlotte Bailey match go longer. But I don't know. Uh, basically, it was, it was wrist locks and arm bars for the first part of the match. And it got 
Kind of picked up him. Orin dumps Alia to the floor from the top. Ali had this nasty looking bruise on his ribs. Um, again, they zoomed in on the rib. Ali tries. Uh, he kicked out of he 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 reversed one RKO, which is pretty good. He got his licks in on Randy Orton, which is good. But Randy Orton hits the RKO. And hey, they don't call the RKO for nothing. Randy Orton wins in a ham sandwich of a match. But the thing I like about this match, like Randy Orton, like like looked over ten, it's like, yeah, you got heart. This match was not foreseen, but this was really fun. It was Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss, the women's tag team champions. The only tag team belts to be on the line, because I don't think I fell asleep during anything else. Versus the Kabuki Warriors, and whoa. Kyrie Sam went straight heel. You can tell because she had her one arm behind her back, put her hand out to shake, that poor little Nikki Cross right into the ropes. Oh, that was so good. And Alexa started to slap the color out of Asuka's hair. Woo! Oh, it was fun. It got me excited a little bit. Uh, I, I, I do kind of like Alexa's strappy bottom. I like strappy along the side. Um, again, this was just one of those like so many unannounced smashes. I was shocked. Oscar let her hair grow out. Oscar's cute looking. Oscar's also a heel. Oh yeah, Oscar and Kyrie saying heels. That's good stuff. I like that. Um, they were doing class. Uh, Kabuki Warriors were doing classic tag team stuff. Like you tag your partner in. Uh, or you go into the, your corner, your partner puts their boot up, you ram your opponent's head into their boot. Classic NWA stuff. Uh, then they just did the double chokes again, the tag, stay in the ring. They start kick, kicking them in the corner. Classic NWA tag team wrestling. Again, I like, I, you go old school and I like it. Uh, there was a rough distraction by Nikki. And, and even Nikki can heal it up too if she needs to. A uh, bunch of false finishes. Oh, it was so fun. But at the end, the green mist came out. No one saw this. The whole crowd went, huh? Yes, 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 yes. Oscar used the green mist to blind <laughs> Nikki Cross because Alexa Bliss went up on the outside because Kyrie Sane kind of was brawling with Alexa Bliss on the outside a little bit. Alexa Bliss was preoccupied. Nikki Cross got sprayed in the face by the poisonous food coloring of Green Mist. And the Kabuki Wars are now women's tag team champions. This is good. This made me smile. Kind of said, oh, maybe this is going to be a good show. This was a surf and turf match. But uh, then it went south very quickly. Uh, the club with AJ Styles came out to take on the Viking Raiders and Braun Strowman. This must have given this must have given AJ Styles flashbacks to the King of Trios. In fact, this probably is like the WWE King of Trios version. But they, they Carl Anderson ate something on his elbow. I think he nailed his funny bone because for like the first half of this match, he held that uh, he held that arm really close to the chest. I'm like, oh my god, they just killed Carl Anderson. But uh, Braun, Braun's really good. He, he had a pretty good kick from AJ. And uh, I'll tell you what, Carl Anderson, it sounds bad, but he is the third best spine buster I've ever seen. Number one's Arn Anderson. Two is Robert Roode. I'll tell you what, to be behind those two and spine busters, that's pretty good. Carl Anderson has an amazing looking spine buster. This honestly, oddly felt. I'm gonna put this chair here because my knee is just. I hate it because it's just tight. So I'm gonna rearrange myself a little bit, make me a little more comfy. But with this match, oh, there. Oh, oh, that felt so much better. 
But with this match, this this was a good match. Um, it just felt like it belonged on Raw main event. Braun eventually did get the hot tag, and there was that nasty chop block. AJ Styles has been looking to do a nasty chop block on Braun Strowman probably forever because he knows Braun could probably eat it the best. But that looks so good, though. And you turn that right into the calf crusher. It makes sense. You get off of the big guy's leg. And then it was just a beating by the club on poor Braun. And it was a terrible DQ finish. The fans were booing this. AJ is just so good and selling in his heel work. AJ Styles should be in WWE like forever. Unless he goes, the only thing I can see him going back to maybe is Shikara. Because that is kind of, I guess that's kind of spiritual home. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's, uh, the thing is, it was a dusty finish. You don't want to see these guys go to a DQ. You want to see a, a, a real finish, especially on a pay per view. I mean, people are paying their good money to see it, and they don't get it. So, this was a dusty old hand sandwich. And this is the kind of where things started to go south. Then uh, Tamina came out, and Tamina's back. Yay. Uh, she pinned Carmella. I didn't, I didn't see how Carmella got the belt. Belt back from Marshmallow. The DJ known as the Marshmallow or whatever. But Tamina jumped everyone. She's a new 24-7 champion. It's so indifferent. They're distributing the wealth. This part is a ham sandwich. And why they had this match, I have no clue. It was Chad Gable versus Baron Corbin. Um, Gable, he just goes after Corbin from the start. He's kind of vicious and driven, which is pretty. And, and then he got vicious. Poor Gable got viciously driven to the bottom part of the thing. Um, Corbin's just really strong. Again, they, it was a good back and forth. Gable won with a roll up, I think. I just know Gable won. I think I came back from using the bathroom then. But it's one of those matches. This really could have stayed on Raw. It's like they're going to put this match in on a pay per view. It wasn't bad. This was the only real, real part that felt like filler, though. This was a can of soup. And then we had Charlotte Flair versus Bailey. Uh, Tamina came out. She was in the, the foreign correspondence section. And, <laughs> of course, Carmella and R-Truth found her. The Street Prophet said, which, which way did she go? Which way did she go? Uh, eventually she wound up in the uh, foreign commentator section did the whole thing, and, and she took Funaki captive, where she held Funaki hostage as a human shield. Of course, R-Truth tried to do the karate kid stuff uh, to poor Funaki. Funaki took a fighting stance, and R-Truth's like, whoa! <laughs> so again, yeah, this is then. Yeah. Tamina loses the belt. She gets rolled up by Carmella. So, it was fun. Interesting. I'll tell you what. This section is also a ham sandwich. Then we had Charlotte Flair versus Bailey. Oh, yeah, the, the match proper. Um, Charlotte doesn't look as good for some reason. Something's wrong with her face, and she lost her mole. By choice of her, if it was a fake mole to begin with, I can never tell. She had, she has having the same problem Becky had for a few times where she's wearing too much makeup, 
and she has like that plastic face and the skin tone on her face did not match the spray tan on the rest of her body and she just looks different in like a weird way and it just looks like she went downhill since, since she's been unfortunate with Andrade. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, Bailey, she gets a little bit rougher. She's still trying to like use the fans. Oh, you want hugging buddies? I'll give you hu Okay, I'll give you hugging buddies. Um, again, Bailey's just, she gets just roughed up. Again, they start to brawl a little bit. Bailey's being a little more healer, she can tell. She has the black stars on her face, the black wrist wrap. Her outfit had uh, black stars and moons on it, I think, or whatever those shapes were. But I'll, th I'll tell you what. Bailey and Sasha are, are, are just ridiculed, I think, by Vince. Only because Charlotte Flair won. Woo! And Bailey lost her belt, and Bailey literally started to cry. But she sat down. When Sasha lost, it looks like Sasha sat down. And she's like, Sasha has like super cry face. Bailey just, I don't know. I've never liked either of them. Again, it was always Sasha Botch for me. And Bailey, the fact that she didn't know how to use a kendo stick, I'm just like, hit her! Hit her! Hit her! Hit her! When she had a her feud going with Alexa Bliss. And I just I just can't get behind those two. And that match, it was a little bit better. It was a cheeseburger of a match. And then in the backstage, uh, Chad Gable's giving an interview to Charlie Caruso. Charlie's a lot shorter than Chad Gable is, by the way. Um, he's making some short jokes. I wonder if this is going to be the, the birth of Shorty G. Uh, so Baron Corbin jumped in the backstage and it looked like a scene from WWW or, uh, yeah. yeah, WWE 2K17 where he threw him through a door. And, of course, the refs there finally... Are you okay? What? Help, help, I need help. Stupid rap. And then we get to the main event of the evening. The Seth Rollins versus The Fiend for the Universal Champion. Seth had loose face going into this ring. Um, and then it was, we it was a weird setup. Because Seth came in, burn it down, yeah. The, the, it was a normal lighting. The Fiend came into his music, which is still amazing. He has his Bray Wyatt head lantern, which is really cool. But then once they lowered the cage, it was like a red light over the cage. I don't think the people in the nosebleed section could really see what was going on. They were probably pretty pissed. They probably had to watch the whole thing on the big screen. Not something you go to a wrestling event for. You want to see what's going on. Even when I went to WrestleMania... 30 here in that was a 30 no 32 I think whatever I forget the Wrestlemania that was here in Orlando but when they did the light projection it was first time it was even like oh that's neat what happened there why did a mega oh then they did it two times too many it's like okay I thought it was neat. I thought it was a, it was different. They're trying stuff. I'll always give credit if they're going to try something new. Hey, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least you tried it. But that red light was terrible. Um, I don't know how people in the nosebleed sections did things. Um, it starts off with Fiend no-selling whatever Seth does to him. Seth is definitely getting the worst of it. Um, the Fiend no-selled the stomp a whole bunch of times. Seth was like, uh, Seth no sold a broken neck. That next snap should be the end of that. After that, the crowd literally started to boo. Oh, and for the Bailey part, this is a far guy. When Bailey lost, 
the crowd's like, na 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 na. Hey, goodbye. Na 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 na. Hey, goodbye. So with that, I mean the fans started to boo. Seth eventually hits three more stomps and a pedigree. Or two stomps, a pedigree, and one more stomp. The fiend kicked out at one. Fiend's no selling. Then there was headshot with a chair. Good. But the fiends again still kicked out. And the crowd began to boo it. And then Seth brought a ladder in. Put the chair on the face, hit the chair with the ladder. That didn't work. Close. Then he brought out a toolbox, put the ladder, put the chair in between the two sections of the ladder, started to wail away on that. Couldn't pin him. Then he finds a sledgehammer. And all of a sudden, the referee thinks, Sledgehammer? Oh no, we can't have sledgehammers. Seth, what are you doing? So think about this. Stupid referee is hell in a cell. There is no DQ. If they want to kill each other with sledgehammers, let them kill each other with said sledgehammers. Maybe not like a knife or fork or gun. Yeah, those three things I would stop at. But sledgehammers, yes, they, sledgehammers have been used in wrestling rings before. So uh, he starts beating him with a... He just hit him in the head with a sledgehammer. And his head was covered with a chair. So, there was a DQ finish. I'll tell you what, the fans were ripped about this. Boo! AEW! AEW! Boo! AEW! Boo! CM Punk! I mean, they just went through all the cheers. And eventually, I, th I think they just said, screw this, I'm leaving. I'm getting the heck out of here. Eventually, The Fiend does sit up. He comes to beat up Seth Rollins more. The Fiend does win, but it's by DQ, so he doesn't get the belt. And for Hell in a Cell, that's garbage. This match was a can of soup. And the overall feel of the show was not a good show. Minus the minus the first match. First match, second match, and to some part the women's tag match was good. Everything else just seemed like it could have been on an episode of Raw. Why, why pay when you can watch on TV and have me have special occasion and to make yummy, delicious beverages to enjoy this, whereas the beverages are just numbing the pain of watching this. So therefore, wow, I don't think I've ever done this. But remember, folks, sometimes the last thing you see is the thing that sticks with you the longest. This Hell in a Cell pay-per-view with a can of soup. And that was Hell in a Cell. Again, skip Hell in a Cell. Go to YouTube. Watch, a so watch the uh, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch match. Match of the night. Easily. Everything else, just don't watch WWE. Just watch Impact Wrestling. In fact, that that's actually leads to a pretty good question. Who is SmackDown's true competitor now? Who's the WWE's true competitor? Is it just AEW, or do you have to throw Impact into the, into the match? To the, the whole thing because Impact's having a pay per view in two weeks. And if it's a lot better than Hell in a Cell, people will remember 
hey, Impact puts on a pretty good show. I don't know. I don't know what else I can say about that. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And please share, comment, and subscribe. And again, I still have about 50 more days on my punishment. But soon, though, I'll be back live streaming. Again, I would live stream pay-per-views. I just can't show them because, well, that's bad. But I might be able to live stream triple A events. Maybe. They're probably really funky about that. I'll try that. And if, it, if I just get zonked, I get zonked. But everyone have a good rest of the night. Don't drink and drive. I'm not even thrilled about saying my PSA. So, bye.